YouTube, welcome back. Um, if you want a lesson with me, check the link in the description below. We'll work something out. We'll make a deal. What's this? Is this an instrument I've been waiting for more than two months for? Yes, it is. This is one of question mark new bass trombones I'm getting in the near future. This is the first one to show up and also the first one to have gotten shipped to me. On November 2nd, this left the person's house on its way to me. And yesterday, January 6th, right? I think yesterday was January 6th. It got here. It took two months and four days to get to my domicile. Yes, that is a long time. It's so long that I actually forgot it was coming, then remembered, then forgot, then remembered, and I think forgot again before it showed up. It was just kind of like, oh, hey, a giant package. Oh, yeah, this bass trombone that I traded for two months ago. I'm not sure whose fault it was. I think it was just um, the Postal Service being completely overwhelmed by the holidays, and it just kind of like got put on hold for a long time. And so it just got here. Um, obviously, it's been in a box for two months. Um, what is it? What is this trombone that I traded for? If you remember, I traded my 50B3OG with Shires Rotors for something two months ago. This is it. This is what I got. Of course, the horn I sent got there in like three days or something. So he's just had that this whole time. This is a Bach. 80s, 90s. I'm thinking it's a 90s bell. There's no way to tell. It's not Corporation and it's still a stamped um, logo. It looks like a 90s logo. Who knows? Um, it's cut. Um, it's kind of a kind of a lighter bell. It's not super heavy. Um, obviously, my first screw bell was super heavy. My corporation screw bell is kind of heavy, I guess. This one seems a little bit lighter. I don't know. Um, connected to a Shire's C tuning slide, which I think is the more open one. There's a B slide and a C slide. I think the C is the more open one. It's got Shire's mounts and I think Shire's spacing. So I could put any Shire's bell on here or put this on a Shire's. I've had a Shire's before with a Bach bell. Um, and I never really got the chance to like try their bells on it. So it'd be kind of cool to swap this out with stuff. And then the uh, the cool part, coup de gras, is the uh, Olsen ball bearing rotors with the uh, attachments and stuff. Um, I've had a horn with the Olsen rotors before. It was a prototype though. I didn't especially like how it played. Could have been me though. I'm realizing about a lot of the instruments I've had is I just sucked at the time. So. Um, I didn't really like it. These I do like. I've played another bass recently, um, well, recently, like a year ago. Um, a friend had his valves on a Holton-ish replaced with these, and it played really well. So I was very excited to try this out, and I am very happy to play it finally. This is my slide. It didn't come with a slide. We just traded bell sections. So um, the usual old Shire's dual bore, and right now I'm using a 93D. The Shires 2 lead pipe it seems to be the best setup. So what do I think of this thing? Well, one, it's pretty well built. It's not lacquered. Um, a lot of the stuff is semi-unfinished. There's kind of just like solder coming out of some of the joints and stuff. Do I care? No, not really. I think it looks just fine. I'd rather have like cool swoops and bends and stuff than a perfectly shiny, completely lacquered, perfect, no acid bleed thing that looks really boring. I don't know, that just really bores me. This, this looks pretty neat. I even like this uh, kind of silly uh, second valve linkage with the bend in it. It needed to be shorter, so you just put a bend in it, I guess. Um, and it seems solid enough. There's no popped solders or anything. It's made by a guy in uh, Canada, I think. Um, the biggest problem I have right now, not playing wise, just how it's built, is the ergonomics are just complete trash garbage. For my hands obviously set up for the last guy and you can see here the f lever it's got this bend in it right after the uh the pivot point and that bend needs to be about half of what it is because right now my hand wants to be here and that means i half valve the f valve and if i put my hand where it works it's just in a really uncomfortable place i can almost not use this leather strap i kind of if i have to use the valves I just have to hold the instrument up myself and use the valves. I'm actually using my friend's uh, 
uh, G flat lever, which is flipped upside down. It's actually not that uncomfortable. That's not in a bad place. It's really just the F lever, which you notice has a cork on it. When it came, it had a full wine cork, like a big one stuffed on there, which in normal times, pretty comfortable, but that made it even worse to use um, because I just, I can't fit my hand and move the valve. So that's something that's going to have to be changed. I can have my tech heat this up and bend it. Um, it's really easy to bend the nickel rod stock, this stuff, just by hand, but this is stainless steel. I'm not going to be able to do that by hand. I actually tried. Don't even try. It's not worth it. Um, when it showed up, I very excitedly put it all together, played it, and I was like, man, these valves have great action, but they're leaking. The cool thing, I guess, I, it's not really a bad thing, about the Olsen valves is that they don't need oil to run. Since the, the valves are floating on the ball bearings, they're not touching any metal, they always have this it's kind of semi-noisy because the ball bearings are going zing, zing, zing. They always have this great action. But that doesn't mean they seal. They, there still has to be something in there to keep the air from just escaping since there's no metal on metal contact. So I took the valves apart, oiled them, put them back together, and now they have the same action and they seal. And so how does this thing play? Well, I was actually expecting a kind of heavier, um, kind of wider, like orchestral box sound. Cause you got, you know, a semi, it's not like a really heavy valve section, but a semi big valve section, a screw bell 50 yellow um, with a C tuning slide. I mean, I'm playing with my dual bore slide and a big mouthpiece and it's not that just like really heavy wide um, box sound. It's actually a little bit wider. It's a little bit faster. The articulation is really easy and every range is nice and even and accessible. So it's exactly what I want in a commercial Bach. I have my axial Olsen valve horn being built as we speak and I'm kind of looking for that to be the more orchestral side, the more large wide side of the, the spectrum. And so I wanted another Bach that does the commercial thing better, which is why I had that 50B3OG with the Shires valves. It's a Bach, does the commercial side better. I just was never really satisfied with how it played. It really needed a smaller mouthpiece to just uh, sing. And so this kind of does, it doesn't do it in the exact same way as my 50B3OG, but it does the same side of things. It does the more commercial side of sound articulation, the ease of playing. It's actually pretty light. Um, there's a little more weight taking it that way because of the screwbell ring, but honestly, it's not a heavy horn. It's so much lighter than the 50K that I've been playing for a while now. So I'm not going to play it on camera a lot because I'm still, I'm still getting used to it, but man, really excited for this and excited for the question amount of bass trombones heading to me at this moment. Keep tuned for, uh, for future bass trombones that are coming. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time.